and welcome to your Daily Chapo Report from the Southern Coast of California. I'm Hannah Bolaños. And I'm Nick Chang. And today we are here to tell you all about the biome of Chaparral. And now, here's Nick Chang with the weather report. Hi, I'm Nick Chang and this is the Daily Chaparral Weather Report. The Chaparral experiences four main seasons. They are winter, which are usually rainy and cool, with 12 to 40 inches of rainfall per year. The springtime. Summers, which are typically hot and dry. And fall. And the temperature in the California Chaparral range between 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the summer dryness, only plants with hard leaves survive. And now we will go to Hannah with the daily plant report. Thank you, Nick Chang. There are many different native plants to the California Chaparral biome. The first we're going to talk about is the blue oak. It is native to California with bluish leaves. It covers 3 million acres around valleys and lower slopes of coast ranges. It is adapted to the drought and dry weather of the Chaparral areas. It can survive up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. It also grows to an average of 30 feet. The way it survives hot temperatures is it has an extensive root system, which allows it to reach deep into the ground to find groundwater. The next plant we're going to talk about is the common sage crush. It is common to the Chaparral areas, and it likes well-drained soils in shaded areas. It's a perennial shrub with straight, stiff stems. It can grow from 2 to 12 feet tall, and its leaves range from 1 half to 1 and a half inches, with ragged edges. It also has small white flowers. When the rain is scarce in chaparral areas, it uses its deep roots to find H2O. And when there is an abundance of rain, it has shallow roots that spread below the surface to absorb surface water. Our next plant is the French broom. It can sometimes be considered a weed, and it is sometimes used for erosion control. It is bushy and can grow from 5 to 8 feet. It has twisted single green branches and small yellow flowers, and it also belongs to the pea family. Our next plant is called the King Protea. It is originally from the South Africa area. It measures 12 inches across with stiff petals, and it looks like a cup. It takes in moisture through its leaves. In South Africa, rain is not very abundant, but there is a lot of fog, and the King Protea's leaves use the fog to get its water. It is also an endangered species and is normally grown in greenhouses and nurseries. The last plant we are going to talk about is the salt marsh bird's beak. It is an annual plant, so it grows for one year and then dies. It is pointy at the end, and it is also blue-green and hairy. It has white flowers that grow on 4 to 12 inch stems. It is also semi-parasitic. It usually grows in salt marshes above the high tide line on the coastal chaparral areas near San Diego. It is also an endangered species, much like the king protea. And now we will go to Chang's Corner for our daily chaparral animal report. Welcome to Chang's Corner, where we will be discussing the native animals of the chaparral. The first is the gray fox, which is found in the chaparrals of California and Mexico. They like wooded, bushy areas where it rains in the winter and has hot summers. They build dens and rock formations, hollow logs, and trees. It looks like a small dog, but has a bushy tail. The back has white and gray stripes with a rusty red tail. They are 21 to 30 inches long with 11 to 16 inch tails. They are omnivores and the predators are man, hawks, eagles, bobcats, and owls. The spotted skunk can be found in the southwest California. They build dens out of holes and line it with leaves. They, have bl they are black with white spots and a white triangle on their forehead. They are typically 21 to 25 inches long and they have a large teeth and claws for tree climbing and digging. For defend, for, to defend themselves, they, have, they spray musk at pred predators. In the winter, they eat rats and rodents, and in the summer, they eat vegetation and insects. In the fall, they add fruit and berries to the diet, and it stays that way until spring. The cactus wren is found in the southwest United States and northern Mexico. They are the largest wren found in the United States. Both sexes have, are brown with white stripes over each eye. They have long dark be beaks and white and black streaks on their backs. They are very active and curious birds. They like to breed in chaparral scrub that has been recently burned. They eat insects, seeds, and fruit, and they get their water from their food. The black-tailed jackrabbit lives in extreme desert for chaparral. They regulate their body heat by maintaining blood, fro blood flow through their ears. They can run up to 36 miles per hour, and the bottom of their feet are protected by fur, which protects them from the hot ground. They are typically 16 to 28 inches long, and they eat tough grasses, leaves, and twigs. They come out tonight to feed, and they eat their food twice. Hello, welcome to Hannah's Human Impact section. Humans are impacting the chaparral biomes by excessively burning the chaparral to create space for farms. Due to this excessive burning, seeds of plants can get too hot and die. 
Also, humans graze, log, and build reservoirs in the chaparral areas, which kills off wildlife and plants as well. Now we will go to Nick Chang for climate change. Due to global warming, the area gets hotter, and although the plants and animals are adapted to hot climates, it can limit the amount of rainfall in the winter or make it too hot in the summer. And that is our daily chaparral report. Thank you for watching. Bye! Thank you.